Hi friends, today I have five upcycle projects for you. Each one will take five minutes or less to create. Simple ways to give those thrifted items a new look. For project number one, you can use any type of glass bottle, paint, brush, baking soda, stencil, and tape. I still haven't restocked my painter's tape, so since it was glass, I used regular scotch tape and it worked well. Sometimes you just have to use what you have on hand to make it happen. I added one third baking soda to two thirds Dixie Bell paint. And that is two different colors mixed in together and applied it with a regular brush. This did take me a couple minutes because this stencil has some really fine lines in it. And I wanted to make sure that the paint got down there without spreading. Um, there were some areas right there where the stencil, because um, I was working on a round surface that the stencil popped up. So I was kind of nervous that there was going to be a blub under there, but not too bad. I think there was only one spot where it had smeared a little bit. So super easy project. And you can definitely spray the bottle with some sealer to make it waterproof. What is your favorite brand of spray sealer? Mine would definitely be Krylon and Rust-Oleum as a second choice. Project number two, rub on transfers, a wood stick, a pair of scissors, and any type of pot. This actually feels like marble and it sat in my booth. I've actually had it in my, tucked in my booth for probably about nine months and it hasn't sold. And in the past, any type of little pots that I've had like this that haven't sold, I usually put one of these vintage style decals on them and this is the midi 2 vintage labels from redesign actually i think i applied these labels and um their other style vintage labels to, to, to quite a few things to get them to sell and it always works i figured out that each label breaks down to about a dollar so it's definitely worth the upgrade even if you add a couple of them on to a piece like this. The transfers go on to a surface like this so easy and you can always spray the transfer with the sealer if you choose. For project number three, E6000 are your favorite glue scissors, a bamboo placemat, a photo frame, a pen or a knife, and then something that you'd like to use for four little feet. First step is to take the photo frame apart and then rip the back stand off if you have one on there. Now for this project, you can choose to either leave the glass in and make it easier to clean. I did remove the glass and keep it out because I really like the texture of this bamboo mat. Okay, so Okay, so I'm about to make a major mistake, but I want to walk you guys through my thought process here. Line the rows of thread up, and you're going to cut each side, so that way it's going to be even inside the frame with those thread lines. Cut at least an inch out from where you measured because it's going to fall apart, <laughs> and because, and you're going to want as much room to tie off the threads, and you don't want the mat to be too small for the frame. Ask me how I know this. <laughs> yeah, I would make it a good inch and a half from where you actually want it. So a quick save, I decided to um, run it the long way because I didn't have enough um, placemat to go right there on the side anymore. I didn't want to mess with having to glue those pieces in. Okay, so once you have your placemat, the length that you want, tie off the threads so that way it doesn't unravel anymore and it's easier to work with. I should have done this all while that mat was lying flat on the table. It would have caused less of the mat to fall apart and it would have been easier to tie off. And you could even use a little dab of hot glue um, to be able to keep that together to make it easier to work with. So the far left and right edges are going to be cut off. I'm taking my knife and scoring each edge before I cut them. You could also use a pen for this, or if you had padding underneath your surface, you could just cut right through it. It cuts nice and easy, which was a bonus. 
and then repeat that step for the other side. And you can use any type of placemat that you want. Might actually be easier <laughs> if it was something solid. And keeping with the back side of your frame up, you want to lay your mat in and make sure you take a look at it from the front to double check to make sure that you like the way that it's lined up before you apply the glue. I took E6000, went along all the edges. I did apply a pretty heavy amount. And before I laid something heavy on the top of this for it to dry, I did flip it around. I didn't show it here, but I did flip it around to make sure that no glue seeped through. And if it did, you can always wipe it off with a cloth. All right, now we want to apply the backing of the frame. I did use the flip side because I liked it better. And you can always cover that up with fabric if you don't like it or even paint it. So now it's time to apply our feet. These were actually wooden eggs that a friend gave me and I liked the height of them, but you could use anything that you want. You could use napkin rings, wooden balls, wooden blocks, just about anything. So beside my little oopsie, this was definitely a fun, easy project. We're going to decorate some wooden bowls that I picked up from the thrift store, stencil, paint, brush, tape, and sealer of your choice. I just use regular apple barrel paint from Walmart. This Lotus stencil I purchased years ago from Walmart. I now purchase all of my um, stencils from stencilsmith.com and we two guys see the new ones that I got that I'll show in next week's video. And I used packing tape actually to hold this one uh, in place because the bowls are shallow i'm only going to use a partial stencil and i'm using my new stencil brush from stencilsmith.com and i love it again i'll show you guys more in next week's video on that upcycle wood bowls are good sellers in my booth unfortunately they don't sell plain so i either add a transfer or a stencil like here and sometimes I repurpose them and glue them onto a candlestick holder. In my home, I use them underneath a plant. So a lot of times in my booth, since I'm right across from the plant section, I will display them with a plant inside of them and they typically sell pretty quick. For project number five, you're going to need a sander, eight to 220 grit sandpaper. We're going to upcycle this thrifted wooden cheese tray using ink stamps. I purchased the set at a yard sale for only $1.50. I know in our thrift stores, you can't touch the set for under $10. I'm not sure if it was a sealer or paint on the bottom of the cheese tray, but it was very sticky and needed to be removed. This is one of the domes that I currently have in my booth now. So I wanted to do something a little bit different and quick. So I did a major sanding on the piece and then using the courier stamp from IOD, I went over it with white ink and my white ink pad does have some browns in it. So it's going to give a little bit different of a color. I had an older copper ink pad um, that had dried out and applied my white IOD ink over that. So sometimes when I press hard, I get a little bit of the copper to show through and I actually like it. I wanted the background to be very faint. And then I'm going to place the bumblebee stamp from IOD. Looking back, I should have used black paint or dark gray paint to apply the bee stamp, but, but I think it'll work and I think I can make it look nice in my display. Make sure that you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell to all because you're not going to want to miss next week's video. Friends, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a super blessed week and I'll see you soon.